What is up my ninjas, Dark Frog Ninja here. Guess what? I'm making a new video. I've got time to make videos and I'm going to start putting out some new content. So I uh, apologize for the uh, last, the break between the last video. It's been about over a month since I did my last video. But uh, today I'm going to go over some stuff here. Uh, we're going to go over, especially this tank. I really haven't featured this tank yet. Um, and then we'll go over the biopod and uh, my mints and see what's up with them at the very end. But the focus of this video today is going to be about the Kataris. That's right. If you follow my channel, you saw on Halloween, I got three Dendro Bates Tinctorious Katari River the dark morph and you can see they are out and about it's morning time so they're they're really wondering probably where the food is at so um, there they are there's the big spot one as I like to call them big spot I don't really have names yet because I can't sex them these guys are probably about four months out of the water now maybe five um, I've had them for over a month they have fattened up quite nicely, actually. Um, they're very inquisitive frogs. Um, they definitely like to move around a lot. They definitely come to the uh, front glass when they see me. Um, they come out of hiding when they see me, usually, because they feel like they're going to get fed. So they are turning into little hogs. Uh, of the three, I have one larger one of the two. And I believe that's you right there, the one I'm focusing on right here is the largest come on let's see if we can get a better focus on that come on now i know i need probably like a macro lens but there you go she's uh probably a she huh, we'll see it's too soon to sex really honestly but i'm hoping for two males and one female um that'll be easier to keep them together as a trio if it's you know any more than that uh female wise it could be a problem but uh yeah, so there we, there, we, there we go, there they are. I'm gonna keep an eye on them, so my camera work might get a little shoddy here and there, but uh, it's just, I, they're, they're really tiny and fast, and I don't want them to jump out, so, um, so camera work might be bad. But anyways, let's go over the tank. So what we have here, as you can see, some cool stuff happening. Um, this is a philodendron wimby. Wim can't, I'm not really sure the pronunciation, but uh, really cool plant. Doesn't get super big. Um, it just kind of grows out bushy. Um, let's close this side of the tank so I can go over. I'll go over it by in sections because yeah, this one's coming right up to the glass. Um, so there's that. You got your standard leaf litter. I've got oak, live oak, southern oak, southern magnolia. Um, see grape leaves in here. So. It's a pretty good, oh, and uh, uh, there's another type of leaf in here and I can't think of the name of it, but I've got a different, like four or five different leaf species in here. I'm gonna replenish it probably here soon because it does need uh, some new leaf litter. All right, and we got my two Brahms up here. I just basically drilled holes into this cork tube that I got from PetSmart. I uh, did it at an angle. So I angled the hole and I lined it up with their stolen, which is the little, I almost like little root stemmy part uh, at the very base of the uh, bromeliad and then I angled drilled it and then I just stuck it in there and they've been growing quite uh, quite a bit um, as you can see this is dead though I can remove that as is this piece and let's just a little tug there we go get off moss cool all right so I'll just drop this down here for the <clears throat> for the uh, isopod springtails to tear it apart. I did yank off a little bit of moss with that because <laughs> the moss was anchored onto it. That's cool. It's fine. The moss will grow. Um, so down here at the base, we have some Java moss that I that I planted. Um, I put a little bit in like about three months ago, and it has taken off. The rest of the log is covered in the uh, dusk jungle moss mix. Um, basically you it's a it's a fine powder i have some of that i have a lot left actually and uh you basically get it get it wet, wet in room temperature water and we kind of create a paste with it and then you take a paintbrush and you kind of paint it on so i painted it all over the log it is going nuts um there's a lot of growth happening a lot of different mosses in here uh looks like some spike moss some java moss and then there's a lot of cool like plants and stuff growing in here too because it did say there was like ferns and 
and lichen and stuff like that. So there's uh, some plants growing in here. I'm not sure if you can see that, but yeah, there's some plants, so that's pretty cool. And I did put some on the back of my wall here. So if you can see all that, I, I kind of just pasted it all over and um, get it wet. I, I water it every day and there you go. And then I covered the, all my logs basically with it. I got this log here is covered part of that log back there and then this log back here I put a little bit on the cool thing about this log is it does have a little plant growing on it um, I'm not sure if it's lichen that's growing in there's some kind of shelf fungus but it's pretty neat looking I like it I put a little bit on my uh, cocoa hut but yeah, I don't know what's happened with that it's not really growing I do need to keep getting that wet but we'll see but I uh, covered the wall with it and then uh, what I did next is I took clippings from um, my mint tank of the ficus pumilia and I just kind of pinned them to the wall and the back wall is now getting covered with ficus pumilia. Uh, I'm going to probably trim this little bit right here that's coming off this log because I kind of want it just to stay towards the back so I'll probably just clip it and I'll pin it somewhere and that's it. That's a good thing about this uh, vining plant guys is this plant here ficus pumilia you can take clips of it um, just you know clip it off somewhere and then pin it and as long as you keep it moist and it's humid it's gonna grow so you you basically have a plant that you can reuse over and over and over and you don't have to buy new plants so that's pretty neat so all right and then up here I'm not sure what kind of plant this is I believe it's a uh, Pilea or I think it's a Pilea of some sort uh, I got it with my uh, mints as a clipping when I got my two mints uh, from Paul Pruitt and I planted it in my grow up bin just to see it would grow and it started growing really good and then I put it in here and it is growing fantastically if that's a word I just made it up if not uh, up, up front here we have a just a button fern not lemon button just a button fern um, and it's growing really well uh, usually I don't have much luck with fern with ferns if there's no uh, aeration or if it gets too soggy they die but this one uh, has taken off so it's pretty cool uh, I put a magnolia seed pod down here this is mostly just for isopods uh, springtails and the like um, and that looks cool it's just cool decoration so let's see if I lift it up if there's any action yeah, there's some action. Not as much as you would think, but there's action. Um, they did tear up my spring po springtail population when I got them. They, were, uh, they would come to the front glass because the springtails would hang up along here because a lot of humidity is up here and they would destroy them. Uh, as well as in my water dish, the springtails would congregate in there and they would jump in and they would just destroy them. So I've been trying to replenish it. I'm going to have to replenish some more in here this weekend because they are, like I guess it eating the springtails. And I kind of don't want them to now. They're at this point now where they've gotten so big, they're eating high day flies really, uh, really well. Uh, at first, they weren't when I first got them. They were having issues with the size, so I was feeling melon gasters. And then yesterday, not yesterday, but two days ago, I decided, hey, let's try a uh, high day flies and see what happens. And I did, and they uh, they tore them up. So. Now they're, they've graduated up to size and flies, so I'm gonna start feeding them those. Uh, if, if I uh, have enough, I gotta start making more. Now that I have uh, seven frogs that are eating them instead of just four. But uh, this is a really cool shot, that's why I haven't moved the camera. So, uh, there you go. I did put a um, ficus pumilia oak leaf back there, I don't know how it's doing I haven't really seen it so I have a feeling it's not doing very well I put it back in the corner I got it for free um, I got it from uh, black jungle for free for some reason it just didn't have a price on it and I ordered one and uh, they didn't charge me for it so I don't know if they were just giving away because they have a surplus of them or if it was some kind of mistake but I only ordered one I didn't get greedy and I think they fixed it so I didn't want to order like five of them and then you know really shortchange them I just thought maybe you know there was some kind of promotion going on I don't know so uh, don't know if that did, if that's doing very well I haven't seen it so it is what it is as long as the uh, regular ficus pumilia creeping charlie I believe is the name it goes by or creeping fig I think it's creeping fig as long as that keeps taking off that's great that's fine I'm good so let's move on to the second half of this tank oh 
I got a frog right here. So let's, yep, yep, as you can see, he's picking off, he or she is picking off springtails that are on the front glass. And I really wish they would stop doing that. Um, I haven't fed them this morning. I do need to feed them, so I will. Um, I'm gonna close the glass just because, there we go. All right, let's like, have you move. All right, you're moving away. All right, so it's on this side, guys. So basically, it's this side of the tank has the cocoa hut in here. I do have some growth on it, not a lot. This, guys, this bromeliad, a lot of you guys always say you can't plant bromeliads in the ground. They're not terrestrial. They'll rot. They'll die. Not true. Depends on the uh, type of bromeliad it is. There are terrestrial bromeliads um, as well as the epithetic uh, bromeliads. This is a terrestrial bromeliad. I can't remember the name of it. I got it like four years ago and it was tiny. And if you remember, if you go back and look at my old uh, mint vibs, uh, mint videos when I have my uh, mints in the exo this exoterra, the, this was little and this was like up front. So I put it in my grow up bin down below after I moved them out into the biopod and it started growing and getting bigger and bigger and bigger. And uh, so I decided to use it in here because I figured this would provide great places for egg laying when they're uh, older, as well as uh, places for them to hide and soak. And uh, sorry, I closed the glass again because he came back up front to eat uh, springtails. Um, big spot here. Like I said, that's the only nickname I really have is Big Spot because as you can see on the top of his head or her, I, I believe it's a male though because the size, there's a one giant spot on the top of the head and uh, that's the one I go for, Spot or Dot. My aunt wants me to call him Dot, but you know, we'll see if that's a female, but I think it's a male. So, uh, there you go. But uh, yeah, move away please. Thank you. And uh, so there you go. This this bromeliad again. Depend. Do your research, guys. Uh, this was when I bought it. I knew it was a terrestrial bromeliad. I cannot remember for the life of me. I got it at a convention from uh, a plant guy that go that used to go to uh, reptile conventions and uh, expos. But he doesn't do it anymore, um, unfortunately, because I wanted to get all my plants from him. But he doesn't. Uh, he's not in the business anymore. So I got it from him, and it's grown to this this huge size. Let's take a look. Nope. Well, so let's see if there's any. Uh, Nope, no flowers. I see if there's any flowers in there, but nope. So there's that. Um, down here, I wish I wouldn't have gotten these. Uh, I got these. These are Mondo miniature Mondo grasses. Uh, they really add nothing to the tank. Um, I had two of them. Uh, one of them looks like it got eaten. So it got eaten by the isopods in here, um, and and that's fine. It's whatever. And then, uh, hello, hi there. And then. Um, you know, I, I just, it just didn't do very well. And this one is just, you know, doing its thing. So not that great, but uh, back there in the final back we have back there, let me zoom in out a little bit. Back here, I just put a philodendron in here. This again, guys, was in my mince tank and I took it out, I cleaned it. And then I um, basically, I uh, put it in a grow up bin just to let it grow out. And now that I did that, as you can see, it's going nuts in here. So I figured that'd be a good cover plant, good plant for them to sit on. Again, maybe a possible laying site because tinks just sometimes will lay in weird spots outside of cocoa huts. So you never know. But uh, I don't expect any breeding out of them for probably another four months or so at the very earliest. So we're looking at uh, probably not until April, May, maybe at the earliest, if I'm lucky, they'll breed. Um, again, these are Katari River. Um, a, a specific locale of, of Tinctorius. They look like the Azarius morph, but they're very dark and they're specific to a very spa, to a, a couple of spots in South America near the Katari River, uh, near Guiana. So um, there's no real true, they don't know where these really came from, honestly. In the hobby, they kind of just, uh, kind of were just brought in and uh, the origins of where they came from really are kind of murky at best. So I just think they're cool because they there's two different morphs. There's a dark morph like this, and then there's the light like morph, which kind of kind of look like green sips, um, the green sip Loweeny tinctorius. But uh, I like the dark morph because they throw off so many different colors, and the legs are dark, the the feet and the toes are sky blue, and they're changing. These guys are changing as they're getting bigger. Their colors are changing. So. Um, but that's, that's it. Oh, let's go over what I have up going on up top. Um, up top, sorry. As you can tell, I haven't done this in a while, so my uh, camera work is not good. Anyways, up top, 
I've got a Beams and Beamworks uh, LED light panel strip here. Got it off of Amazon. I figured it was better than using the Exoterra hood because spiders got up in that and that was an issue. And then I, this is the same Exoterra that I used for my uh, mints. But in this one, I instead cut off all the screen. I cleaned it out. I cut off the screen part because it was rusting and it was getting nasty. So I, I sawed off. That took a little bit of time. I sawed out all the, all the uh, screen part. And then I had this glass panel already on hand. So I decided to just silicone it over it. And now uh, this glass panel is a permanent fixture. I have a permanent glass top. I know you're, what you're thinking. What about ventilation? Well, that's what these are for in an exoterra you got these ventilation strips there's mesh here um, and it ventilates through there so it doesn't get stagnant in there it really doesn't um, the glass does fog up a bit um, you get a lot of condensation on it because there is no real airflow there's just this ventilation down on the bottom so it does get like that and that's fine it just that means you know it's high humid in there and then that just they're enjoying it i do have under the tank heaters one on each side because it is winter um, usually you don't need that kind of thing um, because the tanks stay room temperature, but tanks, unlike the mints, they, uh, they like it a little warmer. So they, uh, they definitely aren't a cool weather frog. So if you can get it in the low to mid seventies for them, that's great. Um, in here, let's take a look, see on my thermometer, 74, 75, depending on where you go. And if you go higher, of course you get the, uh, I don't know if you can see that you get when you go higher it the air temperature gets warmer because it, the light so um as opposed to let's say let's do it right here it's still again 74 75 and that's that's because they uh it's it's really moist in there but that's their tank in a nutshell guys uh i put it all together and took i let it sit for over a little over a month before i got my frogs uh there are isopods in here as well as giant gray and dwarf purple isopods I haven't seen them in a while because they were eating the isopods too. And I did have a little banana station over here at first when they were younger. And fruit flies were laying uh, were, uh, were laying eggs in there. Their mag maggots were out so they were eating those, and which is really cool. But now I haven't had banana in a while, and now it's not no longer a feeding station. So there they are, and I got to feed them after this video is over. So, but let's go over the mint tank. I'm gonna be very careful with these guys again because they think every time I open it up, it's time to eat. But uh, this tank is overgrown. There's Constantine right there. Hey, Constantine. There's one of the newer frogs. Hello. Another one of the newer frogs. Again, it looks like they're both males because I've, I've caught them calling. Then I'll call as loud as Constantine. And then there's Zed back there chilling. Um, she's looking gravid. So I'm thinking eggs are in the future here. We'll see. I have to, honestly, I need to get in that... Uh, cocoa hut back here and clean it out the uh, fern korean rock fern has gone nuts I'm, I'm i'm showing you this now i'm not happy with the way it looks right now but i'm showing you this now because um i want you to see how grown grown like overgrown this is i'm going to trim this back a ton so next video you see you'll see a lot of this is cleared out um, the dragon tail fern is looking awesome. It's gotten very bushy, which is what I wanted. I put in a magnolia pod in here for them as well. I need to replace some of their leaf litter. If you, as you can see, they're sitting on it. It's breaking down a lot. Um, bromeliads are doing pretty good. Bromeliad here. The bromeliad up there is buried, so I have to clip that out too. It's another thing I need to, I need to fix. And then their water just, it might look dirty, guys. Um, but there's a lot of java moss in there and it's kind of taken over and as you can see it looks weird that it's like a black this black stuff right here but that's actually part of the uh, algae growth so um it's doing really well I'm, I'm i put this uh water dish in here to encourage them to breed more i might clean out some of it just to clean it out because um, i wanted a permanent water source this monkey pod wasn't doing it it was holding water for about a day and a half and then it would be gone so I decided to put it, this in here. This holds water in here for about a good five days and I have to refill it. But uh, I'm hoping it'll encourage breeding. They like to sit and soak in it and I'm sure they poop in it. But uh, springtails and whatnot will get in here and it, it doesn't stink. The water is actually surprising. I thought it'd be stinky, but it uh, smells really fresh. It smells like a forest floor, which is kind of nice. So I think that's the java moss and the algae doing its job, cleaning the water as well as kind of soaking up all the different uh, minerals and whatnot. But uh, the creeping figs gone nuts in here. You can see that there's two kinds. There's the oak leaf, which I think is really neat, the oak leaf. And then the uh, 
standard ficus pomelia. And then the uh, Peperomia rubella is back there as well. Again, this is really honestly overgrown. And uh, it's unfortunately not, uh, I'm not happy that it's overgrown, but I've been working six days a week um, and I'm in school. So I have had no time, but now I have plenty of time. Uh, work is pretty much slowed down to done. And then my school, I'm about to take finals next week. So wish your ninja good luck. And uh, there you go. So this is their Biopod. Again, uh, uh, this is a Biopod Aqua. Um, and I was original backer. I've had some issues with it. The power pack died on me. And getting a hold of customer service was like pulling teeth to try and get a power pack sent to me. Um, yeah, the fan sometimes gets extremely loud for about a week to two weeks. I don't know why. Um, it just will just be really loud and buzzy. I don't want to have to replace that because that requires me of draining the whole entire tank and then opening it back up and popping this off, popping that off and all that. It's, so it's, it's, you know, it's a, it's a issue. Would I recommend Biopod? Um, my, my stance on them has changed a bit due to their uh, customer service is pretty poor. And the fact that they, uh, I've had a lot of problems with this unit, maybe because it's a backer unit, maybe the new units are better, I don't know. But as a backer, uh, if all the units are like this, I wouldn't recommend it. I'd say go build yourself an Exoterra, a Zoom it, or have somebody's a Sherman tank build or something along those lines. Have a, do you do yourself a favor and build your own um, out of just a regular you know, either aquarium or an Exoterra or Zoom Ed and you know, put in all the stuff that you want to put in, misting systems, the lighting, handle all that yourself. So that way you don't have to worry about problems like this. Um, I thought I'm thinking about moving them out of this in some some point, moving them into another big Exoterra like they are, like my Kotaris are in when I have more room. And then I might use this just as a, uh, a plant rearing station or a breeding or a, a grow out tank in the future. But I need more room for that. As you can see, I don't have any room. I'm going to back up, show you guys. I don't have any room. It's yeah, I'm, I'm all this is all the room I have, guys, because I would love to get more frogs or at this point. I would love to get some Lukes, some Aratus, uh, one of my dream frogs, one of, the fro one of the poison dart frogs I loved ever since I was a kid with the strawberry poison dart frog. So Ophago pumilio, the blue gene, is what I would love to get. Um, but, you know, I don't have any room. So, you know, when I get my things together here, uh, maybe I'll, when I get more room, I will get some, I'll definitely get more frogs. But as for now, it's not happening anytime soon. But I have a lot of cool stuff going on in the future. I will talk about it later. Probably next year, I'll tell you what's going on with me. Um, my personal life, so a lot of cool stuff is happening. But uh, that's it. It's, uh, sorry for the long update. It's just this is a long overdue update. And the uh, subsequent updates from now will be a lot uh, shorter. So, but uh, there you guys go. There's my mints. And then I'll finish up on the Kataris one last time because they're cool. These frogs are probably my popular, most popular frogs I have right now because a lot of people love them. They, lot, they like that blue color, which I, I do too, but I still love my mints. They, they are funny. They're funny frogs, but uh, there's those two and they want, they want to be fed. So I'm going to end this video right here. All right, guys, stick with me. There'll be more updates coming soon. I'll have the dart discussion back. Uh, maybe I'll start doing some product reviews. Uh, depends. We'll see what you guys what you guys are into. If there's anything specific you want to see from my channel from now on, let me know in the comments. Also, I do have an Instagram and I now have a Facebook page for Dart Frog Ninja. That's right. I decided to go out and get myself a Facebook page dedicated to Dart Frog Ninja. Just look me up on Facebook, do a search. It's a page, it's a group page, and it has my Dart Frog Ninja logo. And then my Instagram is Dart Frog Ninja as well with my logo. Follow me on there. You'll see more pictures, behind the scenes kind of videos, pictures, all that kind of stuff, updates, and uh, more stuff there is done than it is on my YouTube channel, which is a shame, but we'll see. I'm gonna start to update more. So there you go, guys. This is Dart Frog Ninja saying, Frog on.